why Halo Infinite's visuals don't exactly look next gen. In this video, we're gonna go into exactly why. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button. It lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Helps more people get a chance to see the video so they get to stay up to date with everything going on in Halo. So we've had some time to digest everything that happened on Thursday with all the reveal and all the extra information that came out after the reveal as well when it comes to Halo Infinite. There is a lot to digest. It seems like from a lot of people's first reactions of seeing Halo Infinite, it's very positive but then once we started looking into the details of seeing how this game is actually working and how much detail can be pulled out of this trailer we started noticing quite a few flaws most of those flaws come in with the details of certain models as well as the lighting not exactly looking the best though i do want to say you guys are in the right you are rightfully concerned about the visuals in this game i am as well this is my biggest concern like this is what we're seeing this is the game that we're seeing in front of us am i assuming that's going to be improvements yes how well they're going to be improved i have no idea will they be improved possibly it's you know we still have four months until their game is released this bill is rumored to be from january which is when they solidified a functioning build that they wanted to kind of perfect a little bit more because you know that they wanted to make sure this looks the best they can if at the time so um this is what we're seeing like this is pretty much going to be the game like we might see some better detailing and lighting uh but for the most part like this is what the game looks like so if you guys are concerned you guys are rightfully concerned you have the right to feel that way. Me personally, I have faith within 343 that they're gonna try their best to improve the lighting and the texturing to give us a game that we want and are very excited about. I mean, we do know that 343 does have a history of changing the visuals from a beta or early build to the final build like they did with Halo 5. So there's a lot of things that can change from now until the release of the game. And especially since we gave our feedback from the demo, we seemed to like the gameplay, but the visuals we're really concerned about. And you know that 343 is going to move forward and really hammer down the functionality of this game so that we don't have less pop in textures, pop in lighting, uh, like the grass less popping in, things like that. Like, you got to make your voice heard. And we certainly did, and they're listening. I think these visual criticisms are not really necessarily due to the lack of ability of 343 to make a good looking game, because we all know they can, especially with Halo 4. That was probably one of the best looking games ever on the 360. I think it came from a bunch of design choices that they decided to go with to help them create the game that they wanted to play. I think the issue of the visuals really comes from the design choices that they made for this game. A lot of unique design choices we've never had before in Halo, and so that's why things might not be looking the same as you would expect for the progression of visuals. So in this video, we're gonna get into all the details why. So one reason I think is because they're going back to a much more simplistic art style that we've seen back in the original trilogy of Halo games, where it was much more simplistic, where like later games like Halo 4 and 5 became much, much more complex and really intricate designs. So there's a lot more simplicity in the geometry of everything. So that's one thing right there. Though the main issue of, of why I think we're having these visual issues with Halo Infinite is because of the format of open world. Previously in Halo titles, they were much more linear. Yes, we might have had some more open areas we could have gone around to, but essentially you're going to go from A to be for the most part. I mean, like some missions, like the second mission, Combat Evolved, that was much more open. You can choose exactly how you get to A to B because there's like a bunch of little side points you can go to, but essentially you're going from A to B. And that's kind of the, been the basic format for campaigns when it comes to Halo. We've never had the open world before. So that means that we're gonna have to have a much larger scale of the world. In fact, they said several times larger than the combined spaces of Halo 4 and 5, which is absolutely huge. It's think about. So having to have so much quantity of items within the world and what you're looking at, essentially meaning that that's probably gonna be less quality. It's kind of a quantity over quality kind of deal. I think that's what's kind of going on with this. You see games like say, like The Last of Us 2, I mean, obviously Digital Foundry made these representational uh, comparisons, which I think are, did a great job on that video. I highly suggest you guys checking out that video, showing how games with much more static lighting can go a little bit more detailed because they can 
bake in shadows, basically texture certain items in the world that look like they have shadows or darker coloring to them. Where Halo Infinite in the open world and having a day night cycle means that a lot of the lighting has to be generated, meaning the lighting that we're seeing is done in real time. And lighting has always been very intense on graphics and trying to process them properly, especially doing it on a console and you're trying to maintain 60 FPS at such a large scale and trying to have so many assets on the world. One thing you're going to have to do is probably reduce the amount of polygons you can see, hence why we see the game the way it looks. It's probably why with the announcement trailer we saw these nice sprawling natural landscapes and then once we saw the gameplay demo there was a lot of pillars in the way. I think what that was meant to do was to reduce the amount of polygons and so then you can have a bigger expansive world with uh, having less detail on there. Using that dynamic lighting system like a day night cycle means you can't bake in your lighting, meaning you can't texture your item for a specific lighting like we've had in previous Halos. That's why you've seen probably previous screenshots in Halo looking absolutely fantastic. And in this game, not so much. That's because all the lighting has to be done in real time in engine and that's why it might be looking less positive for you guys another thing to take in consideration with the demo is that it was done at dusk is when that gameplay was taking place dusk has very even lighting just naturally in the world as well it's much more flat and less detailed you have less contrast which makes it great for like filming scenes with like an actual camera as it has creates more consistency though you do lose that detail of shapes as well because it's darker out it's kind of harder to see now some things were like we saw with the elite in that one hangar yes that was a bit of an issue as the texturing and the light the lighting on that elite looked very flat and it didn't really show much of the textures or anything like that but once that elite died and landed in the light it looked a lot better and that's because it's dusk and games have always kind of struggled to showcase dark lighting a lot of times games they've even kind of cheated and just used bright lighting but then just put like a, a shade of blue on everything to make it look like it's nighttime I've I've taken a few screenshots from the trailers to showcase a few of these images and you can see with the dusk darker images a lot of the detail is lost because it's rather dark out and dusk is a very even color tone when it comes to the lighting on it though when you have a bright light flashing on it you get actually get the chance to see the detail that's in these character models it makes the game look a lot better uh, i actually looked at the gameplay trailer and it showed some daytime gameplay and it actually did look a lot better here are a couple screenshots of the Mangler that I put in my downgrade potentially video showcasing the demo version of the Mangler that was in a much better lighting that we saw in that one single screenshot that we, I'm sure we've all seen before and compare that to the one that has better lighting that's much brighter it brings out the details of the weapon a lot more so that could just be an issue of just the lighting itself doesn't handle dark lighting super well but handles bright lighting much better but back when I was talking about saying that they're trying to maintain 60 FPS in such a large open world if you look at the elevator scene from the demo you do notice that the frames are dropping right there and there are some pop-in clouds and textures and lighting and things like that and that's because in those kind of situations when you're overlooking such a large expansive area frame drops always happen no matter what game it is and that's probably why you see the pillars are so prevalent in this demo is because they try to reduce the amount of frame dropping that you can have with the game when you're doing scenes like that and with an open world that's this large like Halo Infinite yeah you kind of need to simplify the geometry a bit more so then you have a much smoother experience and with the rumored 4k 60 on a console that's gonna be pretty tricky to pull off for sure at a decent price point on top of that so that's probably why we see the design choices that they made now one thing I do actually want to kind of want to bring up when it comes to talking about Halo Infinite is that a lot of us are discussing the graphics graphics of the game, but not necessarily the gameplay. I've heard that definitely people have their concerns when it comes to the gameplay, but from the majority of people when I've heard, it sounds rather positive, which is actually probably the first time we've ever had this switch of everyone having their worries about the visuals rather than the worries of the gameplay itself. For the most part, I think most people are pretty happy with what we saw for gameplay-wise with the for the campaign. Obviously, when the multiplayer gets revealed, the pitched forks and torches might be brought out then, but until then, 
I'm kind of glad that we're actually com having much more discussion about the visuals rather than the gameplay. Because you know, with Halo fans, if there was something we really didn't like about the campaign gameplay, we would 100% bring it up. And also keep in mind, that I mentioned in a video as well, that the Slip Space engine is set to help out with graphically and fidelity throughout the lifespan of Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is a game that's supposed to stay around for 10 years, and Infinite's gonna be a platform for Halo. There are going to be multiple upgrades to the game throughout the years as well. I would expect it to at least. I couldn't imagine these graphics holding strong 10 years later. Again, we'll know more as more information is revealed of, over the upcoming weeks and months. So if you guys want to stay up to date when those leaks and information come live, make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. Keep yourself updated with everything going on with Halo Infinite. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment down below. Are you hopeful that they will improve the visuals of Infinite? Or do you think this is the game? Like, this is what we're going to be getting. Leave it in the comment section. I do read all of them and try to reply to the most of them as well. If you're new to the channel, if you miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen or over here. I got a link to all my news and informational video playlists. If you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so, we've been uploading like a lot of content recently. So I would be surprised if you guys caught up with all of it. If you have, I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.